All right, it's always great to see those that you disagree with make fools of themselves, and that's what this magazine, Jacobin, has done. If you're not aware, Jacobin is a democratic socialist quarterly magazine, and if you're interested, the publisher, Bhaskar Sankara, once debated Gene Epstein and did not do very well. I'll leave it at that. It was a good debate, though, and uh, it can be found on Reason's YouTube channel if you want to check it out, and I, remind, I, I recommend checking it out. It, it was a very good debate. But anyway, they recently tweeted that, quote, socialist systems clearly entail some waiting, but next time some conservative American trots out this objection, ask him how much time he spends waiting around at hospitals and for public transit in the land of the free, end quote. All right, well, this is hilarious to me because they used hospitals and public transit as examples of the failures of industries in the, quote, land of the free, as opposed to what we could have under socialism. Obviously, they are implying that we have a free market capitalist system when it comes to hospitals or public transit, which is utterly laughable. Government essentially runs the show in both of these arenas, so I'm not really sure what country or planet they're living on. To start with, hospitals are regulated to an absurd degree. It was found that hospitals spend nearly... $39 billion a year solely on administrative activities associated with regulatory compliance. That level of regulation will absolutely bog down any organization. It requires a great deal of time, energy, and resources to comply with the labyrinthian regulations and the skyscrapers of paperwork in order to not have federal agents show up at your hospital. It should also be noted that due to the obscene amount of regulations imposed on hospitals, it is extraordinarily difficult to open a new hospital. But not only that, federal regulations require a certificate of need if you want to open a new hospital. This means you have to petition the government for them to even allow you to open a new hospital. This could have a negative effect, perhaps, on competition and supply of hospitals and medical professionals, which could all adversely affect wait times. This it should all just come to you logically, but apparently logic is lost on Jacobin magazine. If there is an artificially increased demand in healthcare, which there absolutely is, and at the same time you have a restricted supply of healthcare givers and hospitals, it should not shock you that waiting times aren't as good as they otherwise could have been. So when Jacobin says in their tweet, the quote, land of the free, I want to say, not quite. In the real land of the free, it should be as simple as investors and doctors seeing a need and addressing it. But no, that doesn't really happen. And as much as hospitals may be frustrated with the cost and the time of complying with regulations, at the very least, they know they won't be threatened by any competing hospitals that might be more efficient and cost effective. Government often does a wonderful job of shielding established and larger businesses from the nuisance of competition. But unfortunately, we all suffer because of that. But all right, next up is public transit. Now this one's great. Public transit is almost, by definition, run by the government. Now, okay, some socialists may say that socialism doesn't mean everything is run by the government, and that's true as far as the textbook version of socialism is concerned, but having government run everything is how it always seems to end up. But regardless, the main takeaway here is that they're criticizing free markets and capitalism by, f by pointing to public transit, which is largely antithetical to free markets. But as long as we're talking about wait times, oddly enough, free enterprise did come up with the solution, that being Lyft and Uber. Not perfect companies by any means, but my wait times with either of those companies are a fraction of the time it takes for a subway or a bus or a taxi to arrive. Taxis, by the way, are not government run necessarily. However, we all know about the cost of the taxi medallion and how it was hundreds of thousands of dollars. And in some cities, it was upwards to millions of dollars at some point in time. These, of course, were mandated by the government. Talk about a government created barrier to entry in the marketplace. But anyway, back to Uber and Lyft. I will say this, if I call for a Lyft, it's generally less than two minutes before they pick me up, depending on where I am, of course. There were only a few exceptions to this, though, and that was when I was in Las Vegas 
Um, we called an Uber, and we quickly found out that due to a newly passed law in Las Vegas, Ubers were only allowed to pick people up at very specific locations. So we had to walk from where we were in nearly 110 degree heat, this was two summers ago by the way, and find this Uber in a city that I had been in only once before, years beforehand. And so I really didn't know where I was going, and it was quite frustrating. And it took us a very long time. So the only time I was actually frustrated with Uber Uber wasn't even their fault. It was the fault of an unbelievably idiotic government regulation. But the Uber driver was sitting there apologizing, saying it would have been easy for him to pick us up, but he couldn't legally do it. I told him not to worry about it. So anyway, I saw this tweet and I thought it was hilarious. Like I said, it's always wonderful seeing those you disagree with just expose themselves for the non-thinkers that they are. Because honestly, I don't know what they could have been thinking when they sent this tweet out. It's, it's embarrassing, quite frankly. Um, but that's it for now. Like, subscribe, and share, and please take it easy.